studied uh, Buddhism about uh, 17 years and I got the novice ordination 2001 and the higher ordination 2002 and I went to Burma 2001 for a study of Buddhism and also practiced about 14 years in Burma and Thailand so from the Burma I got a two degree actually with Buddhism diploma and Bachelor of Arts and after that I went to Thailand to study my Master of Arts then I came here to the United States for, for doing the religious service so um, before before studying my Dhamma talk so I would like to introduce all of you because I never meet here. Could you introduce yourself please? Yeah, my name is Annie. <coughs> okay. My name is Christian. Okay. Hi, I'm Gail. Hello, I'm Claude. Okay. Can you speak a little louder when you speak? Because it's I don't hear you too well. Okay, okay, okay. I'll speak louder. No problem. <coughs> um, my name is Carl. Okay. I'm Drager. My name is Ted. Evelyn. Mm -hmm. Liz. Yeah, Daniel. Okay. So, <coughs> can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, no, it's louder. <laughs> so, before uh, starting uh, my Dhamma talk, so let me pay homage to the Buddha. Namo tassa bhagavatu varatu samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavatu varatu samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavatu varatu samma sambuddhasa Pay homage to the Blessed One. Dear friends in the Dhamma, um, today I am going to explain how to practice loving kindness meditation in daily life as well as also and you know, how to develop the jhanas did you, did, uh, did you hear the jhanas no right okay and and do you, did you hear the dhamma talk about the jhana from bhante suddhasu because he also speak about loving kindness meditation did you hear that yeah. loving kindness meditation did you practice Okay, so um, today I will explain the basic at the beginning how to practice loving kindness meditation as well as developing jhana. Because from the Sanyutta Nikaya, connected discourses with Sariputta. I will explain this one very, very clearly. Actually, this is not so long, very short discourses. At the beginning, I would like to explain um, how to practice loving kindness meditation. So you just sit down comfortably and then you remember a time when you were happy. <coughs> like um, some people, you know, when they hold the baby and they feel very happy when they see the baby eyes, right? And when that warm and warm feeling will arise in the center of your chest, then you make wish. May I be happy, may I be calm, may I be peaceful, may I be full of joy, may I be content and so on. Whatever you want to, whatever you want to make wish, you can wish for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes you have to choose a spiritual friend and that a spiritual friend have to be the same sex for example you are man so you have to choose the man you are a uh, woman you have to choose one woman and the rest of time you start radiating loving kindness to him or to her so we'll practice here about 30 minutes. 10 minutes you radiate loving kindness to yourself and then 20 minutes to your spiritual friend. 
So when you practice loving kindness meditation, <coughs> your mind will be distracted. Your mind will be distracted. So what will you do at that time? As I give you here, the five hindrances. Five hindrances will arise in your mind. Then you have to use the harmonious practice. So I give here five kinds of hindrances and then harmonious practice. So what are the hindrances? Hindrances number one, sensual desire. Number two, hatred, aversion. Number three, sleepiness and dullness. When you practice meditation, you feel sleepiness and dullness, you know. And then, restlessness and anxiety. The last one is doubt. So how about doubt? Doubt means whatever our teacher is teaching, maybe that one is not the correct way, maybe that one is not the right way. What we are practicing, this is maybe not the right way, correct way. So, and so on. If you have that doubt, your meditation will go negatively. So, these five hindrances will arise in your mind. Then you have to use recognize, release, don't keep attention there continuously, and relax in your head and in your, in your the whole body. This is the, our brain, okay? So around the brain, there is meningi. When feeling, sensation, thought arise, then the, our brain tighten. Then you get a headache. So when you relax it, then your mind will be pure and agile, clear. You feel it. For your head and the whole body you feel so comfortable. It means you are reducing the craving. So what, what is the definition of craving? The craving means I like it and I don't like it mind. So when sensual pleasure rise, sensual desire rise in my mind, I like it. I want to get it. Right? And when hatred rise, I don't want it. But it still is arising in my mind. These are the craving. Right? So when you relax in your head, just relaxing, relaxing, then your craving will fade away. Craving will disappear, you know? So in Buddhism, the Buddha said that we have to overcome craving. The craving will come, we have to overcome that. And then you have to bring up the wholesome thought. So how do you bring up the wholesome thought? By smiling. When you smile, then you will see wholesome thought will arise in your mind. Then keep the wholesome thought continuously. So these are called harmonious practice, right? When sensual desire arises in your mind, then you use the right effort, harmonious practice. Recognize, release, relax, please. And then bring up the wholesome thought by smiling. And then keep the wholesome thought continuously. When hatred arises, then again recognize it, release it, relax in your head, just relax in your head and mind. And bring up the wholesome thought by smiling. And Keep the whole center continuously. And when sleepiness, dullness rise, then again recognize it, release it, relax, and bring up the whole center by smiling and keep the whole center continuously. Restlessness and anxiety, when will arise, you will understand that. Then recognize, release, relax, and bring up the whole samtal again, and keep the whole samtal continuously. And last one is doubt. When doubt will arise in your mind, then you again use the harmonious practice. So these are the key. 
So when you practice loving kindness meditation, among the five hindrances, any one must arise in your mind. Then you have to use the harmonious practice, right or foot, right or foot, again and again, again and again. In that way, you'll see the hindrances will be weaker, weaker and weaker. Then later on, you can practice loving kindness meditation five minutes without any distraction, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty five minutes like that so then you understand you'll understand very clearly how your mind is changing you'll get the something change in your mind you'll understand that you know so this is the basic actually um, instruction so when you at home so how do you practice <coughs> that you can start radiating loving kindness to your spiritual friend. When you are walking, when we're uh, taking shower, whatever activities you are doing, just start radiating loving kindness to your spiritual friend. And what is the definition of mindfulness? Can anyone answer that? What is the definition of mindfulness? So the mindfulness means re, remember um, how mind's attention moves from one thing to another. How mind's attention moves from one thing to another. When I am practicing and I know how my mind is moving from one thing to another. This is the, the, the meaning of the mindfulness. So you, you, you understand that. Because you know how your mind is moving, right? And how hindrance is coming, you know that. That means you are wired, right? And um, do you know the meaning of the jhana? No one? Can, can I remember Concentr this? Concentration. There's one that's, I don't know all of them. Okay, anyway. Concentration is one of them? Yeah, according to my, my understanding, I can say that the jhana means the stage of meditation. The stage of meditation, jhana. So, here in this sutta, I am, uh, today what I am going to talk, connected discourses with Sariputta. So, Sariputta is one of disciples of the Buddha and who was very wise monk, very intellectual monk. And he just met the one time with the Buddha and he, whatever Buddha said only one time and he understood. He was very intelligent, you know. So, uh, let me, let me read this sutta. I think um, before, in, in this sutta then you'll understand what is the first jhana second jhana, third jhana, and fourth jhana. So jhana means a stage of meditation. There are four kinds of jhana. First jhana, first stage of meditation, second jhana, second stage of meditation, third jhana, third stage of meditation, fourth jhana, fourth stage of meditation. So let me read the sutta and then I'll give some comment from, from the, from, from the uh, scripture. On one occasion, the Venerable Sariputta was dwelling at the Savati in Jatas Grove, another Pindika's Park. This is the name, the place where Buddha was is the disciple of the Buddha, Sariputta was living. Then in the morning, the Venerable Sariputta dressed and taking bowl and rope, entered the Savati for alms. Then, when he was worked for alms in Savati and had returned from the alms, alms round, after his meal he went to the blind, blind man's group for the day's abiding. Having plunged into the blind man's group, 
he is down at the foot of a tree for the day's abiding. Then in the evening, the Venerable Sari Buddha emerged from the seclusion and went to the Jatas group, Anatta Pindika's work. The Venerable Ananda saw the Venerable Sari Buddha coming in the distance and said to him, Friends, Sari Buddha, your faculties are serene. Your facial complexion is pure and bright. In what dwelling was the Venerable Sari Buddha spent that day? That means, you know, the Sari Buddha, he practiced meditation. And after finishing his meditation, he was coming to another monk whose name is Venerable Ananda. So when Venerable Ananda saw him, your face looks so bright. Your face is so sh serene. What kinds of meditation did you practice today? Then he's going to explain. Then he'll say now, here friends, secluded from sensual pleasure, secluded from unwholesome states, I entered and dwelt in the first jhana. So I said that jhana means stage of meditation, which is accompanied by thinking and examining thought with joy and happiness born of seclusion. Yet, friend, it did not occur to me I am attaining the first jhana, or I have attained the first jhana, or I have emerged from the first jhana. It must be because I making, mind making, and the underlying tendency to conceit have been thoroughly uprooted in the Venerable Sariputta for a long time, that such thoughts did not occur to me. So, how will you understand when you attain the first jhana? You know, as I said at the beginning, you start radiating loving kindness to yourself. Do you remember a time when you were happy? When you practice that way, there were five hindrances will come. You just use the harmonious practice, right effort. Then you see five hindrances will not rise for a moment, for one minute or two minutes, thinking and examining thought will arise. We call him Pali Savitaka Savisara. Thinking and examining thought will arise. Joy will arise. Happiness will arise. Then you let in the first jhana. So this is the characteristic of the jhana. You will attain the first jhana. So when five hindrances will come again, will rise again, then you will drop from the jhana. So again you have to use the harmonious practice, recognize, release, relax, bring up the wholesome thought, and keep the wholesome thought continuously, then again you will be in the jhana. So, to understand in your, in, your, in your mind, thinking and examining thought, joy, happiness, unification of mind. When you rise in your mind, then you are in the first jhana. So, is it clear about the first jhana? If you have any questions, because if you understand the first jhana, then I'll do the next. If you don't understand, you can you can ask me. So that I can I will try my best to answer. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, please. What do you mean by wholesome thought? Thought, thought in your head, like wholesome thought means. Um, like um, sensual desire not arising, right? And then hatred not arising in your mind, and 
and greed not rising, you know, and your mind is not restlessness. Okay, here wholesome means greed, hatred, uh, conceit, and aversion, all those things not wholesome. All those things are wholesome. But what do you mean by wholesome? Give me an example of wholesome, please. Non greed is wholesome. So, by, by wholesome thoughts, do you mean thoughts that don't lead to suffering? Examples you gave like greed, uh, gr gr thoughts motivated by greed lead to suffering, thoughts motivated by um, and hatred lead to suffering. So a whole, those would be unwholesome thoughts, so a wholesome thought would be a thought that does not lead to suffering? No, wholesome thought lead, uh, does not lead to suffering. Uh. Yeah. Unwholesome thought is lead to suffering. Huh. So the example would be like, may everybody be happy. Is that the kind of thought that you mean by wholesome thought that is in your head during jhana? Right. You, I mean, when you are in, in your mind, I said four things. One is the thinking and examining thought. Question and answer. Joy will arise and happiness will arise. It, it occurs one by one, one by one. It's very fast when you will practice that. You know? So those are the wholesome thoughts. Those are the wholesome. So, and then, uh, like five hindrances. So those are the unwholesome, where it, it will rise in your mind, this is also part of practice actually, when it will arise, you have to be right about all the time, those, those are the unwholesome. There is one sutta actually, is called uh, right view, the right view. In the Majjhima Nikaya sutta number, I think seven, uh, right view. In that sutta mention what is wholesome and what is unwholesome, very clearly. Taking life is unskillful, that means not to killing any living beings. And taking what is not given, not to steal other properties. And if you want to take something, you have to say someone, you know, you can just go and take it. So this is unwholesome. And then, Sexual misconduct, not to have any uh, adultery with other partner. And then, uh, another one, not to lie with anyone. If you lie, this is unwholesome. If you not lie, this is wholesome. And then, not to slander. If you slander, this is unwholesome. If you not surrender, it's wholesome. And covetousness, you know, if if you if your mind is covetousness, unwholesome. If if non covetousness, this is wholesome. So he also mentioned mentioned ill will unwholesome, non ill will wholesome and wrong views, unwholesome, non-wrong views, I mean, right view, wholesome. So this, these are the wholesome and unwholesome. Is it clear? <laughs> okay, anyway, so what I, thank you very much. So what I want to know about the jhanas, so first jhana, <laughs> is it clear to you? Because I want to, I will go to the next, is the second jhana. So jhana means, what did I say? Jhana means a stage of meditation, right? So how do you understand the first jhana? When thinking, examining thought, joy, happiness will arise in your mind, five hindrances will be absent, five hindrances will not be there, then you will attain the first jhana, right? 
and the next Sariputta said to Ananda Dear friend, with the subsiding of thinking and examining thought, I entered and dwelt in the second jhana, which is internal confidence and unification of mind, is without thinking and examining and has joy and happiness born of collectedness. Here actually translated concentration. I don't use that one. I use collectedness. Your mind will be collected. You know? So, when you attain second jhana, thinking and examining thought only rise to less talk. So, joy, happiness, and unification of mind will be present. And Five hindrances won't rise. Is it clear? Then you attain the second jhana. And he again said, Here, friend, with the fading away as well of joy, joy also won't rise. You see, step by step. First, thinking, examining, thought, stop. And now, he said, joy. I dwell in a second one. And mindful and clearly comprehending, I experienced happiness with the body. I entered and dwelt in the third jhana, of which the novel once declared. You know? So it means that when you are practicing continuously, then joy won't arise. Then you attain the third jhana. Five hindrances will be absent. Then gradually equanimity. So at the beginning, thinking and examining thought stop rising, and joy stop rising, and then eventually you'll see that your happiness also don't rise. Happiness, happiness will not rise and your feeling from here to come to your head you feel that because at the beginning you start radiating loving kindness in the center of your chest right may I be happy may I be calm may I be peaceful and, and then whatever you want to wish you just wish continuously and then you attain first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. Then you feel him from here, it will come to in your head. At that time, you, uh, you have to change your meditation. If you, if, you, if you practice the five days, seven days or four days retreat, then teacher will change you, change the meditation. So you have to practice six directions at that time. Forward five minutes. Uh, may all living beings be happy, calm, peaceful, and like that. So you, 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 uh, loving kindness will spread like that. Forward five minutes. Backward five minutes. Left side five minutes. Right side five minutes. Minutes above five minutes. Below five minutes, and then all direction. So how do you practice all direction? Like uh, candle. You have to visualize like one candle is here in front, right? When you light it, I mean it giving the light all all direction, right? So similarly, you have, when you practice um, all direction, loving kindness, so you have to, your loving kindness will go and spread will, like that. Right. So here, um, this is the equanimity, it's the fourth jhana. Then you will go to the next, next stage. It's called uh, the base of the in infinity of space. So when you practice the sixth direction, then from that stage, 
you will attain another one. That one, the base of infinite space. That time you have to change meditation again. So you cannot practice any more loving kindness. You have to practice compassion meditation. That time. So, how do you practice compassion meditation? If you know how to practice loving kindness, compassion is easy. That time your mind will be more soft. You will experience that. So your compassion will go forward, backward, left, right, above, below, and all direction. You know? That time you feel your mind is very light. And then you are light on the sky or maybe on the ocean. You know? You feel that. The base of infinite space. So that's why he has said, here friend, with the complete transcendence of perceptions, of forms, with the passing away of perception of sensory, impingement, with the non-attention to perception of diversity, where that space is infinite. So when you do the sixth direction, you know, forward is infinite. Your compassion will go that infinite. You know, some people can radiate very fast, a long, long, long way, and some people is very difficult actually. So it's depend. So and then the next one is the base of infinity of consciousness. So when you can develop compassion. The base of infinite space, then from there you attain the another another stage that one called the base of infinite consciousness. That stage you'll experience how consciousness is arising and passing away. Arising and passing away. It arises very fast. Very fast. It will arise. Very quickly. Then you understand everything is, you know, birth, death, birth, death, birth, death. It's arising, passing, arising, passing, arising, passing away. It's the link of the consciousness. The link. We call the dependent origination. Did, did anyone study dependent origination? Do you know that? You know, right? Yeah, dependent origination. Is it? another sutta. So you'll see the link of consciousness in that stage is arising quickly, very quickly, very quickly. Then you feel everything is impermanence. Impermanence. Suffering, not self. You'll experience that. That stage. And then next, when you develop that, when you attain that stage and you practice continuously, continuously, then you live in another stage which is called the base of nothingness. So, in that stage, you're just watching your mind. Close your eyes and then just watching your mind. Then you'll see that you are practicing, practicing, you won't see anything, everything empty. This stretch is sometimes very dangerous actually for the meditators. Some of them, they cannot see anything and they break the meditation. You know what happened when I was practicing under my teacher in Missouri? Uh, my teacher name is Iban Tebe Malaramsi. He, uh, every meditator <coughs> have to go to him every morning at 9 o'clock to see him because he wants to see everyone. 
and he advised me, please wake up at three o'clock and practice meditation at your at your kuti, at your room cabin. And I got up at three and I started practicing meditation one sitting four hours. Then one one day I couldn't see anything. Nothing happened. You know, I was thinking maybe my meditation is not going well. Then I break meditation. I stood up, you know. And when I went to him, then he asked me, How about your meditation? Oh my meditation. I closed eyes and then I couldn't see anything. And I was thinking that maybe nothing happened. Then he said, Did you watch your mind? And I told him, Well, I don't know what is happening because I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see anything there. He said, Just you have to watch the mind. You cannot say anything is that this is the good sign for you. Because he has said the base of nothingness, right? You cannot say anything at that stage. Just watching, watching, watching your mind. You have to watch it. Then eventually from that stage, you will go to the another one. The nest, which is called the base of neither perception nor non-perception. So when I break my meditation, then he scolded me, you know. He told me, no, 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 no. You should not practice. You should not break your meditation like that. You, from that stage, you will attain the next one. The base of neither perception nor non-perception. So from there, when you attain that, then feeling, Perception, consciousness will stop everything. Then huge joy will arise in your mind. You will feel that that joy never arises in your human life. This is the uplifted joy. You will experience that that time you will attain the, the path of istri mantra we call him pali sutapatti manka we call him pali right so i think from from here i don't want to go i don't want to explain more because if i explain more it will be confusing you know so these are the gradual practice so if you read the sutta number 84 how the Buddha practice meditation because he went to his two teachers actually one teacher named Alar Kalama who practiced concentration meditation he, he went to him he asked him could you explain me how did you practice uh, uh, how do you practice meditation he said well I practice concentration meditation. He attained the, the base of nothingness. Then Alar Kalama taught the Buddha. Uh, at that time he he, he was in uh, he was the Prince Siddhartha. So whatever he taught to him, he could develop very quickly. And then Alar Kalama told him. Prince that you can stay here. You can teach to others with me. He wasn't happy. He said, no, no, I have to go further. Then he went to another teacher, Uddha Karamakutta, who could develop his mind, who, who attained the base of nothingness, uh, the base of neither perception nor non-perception. And Uddha Karamaputta also taught to Prince Siddhartha. Prince Siddhartha could develop very well, very quickly. And he also said the same thing. And eventually he said, Prince Siddhartha said, No, no, I have to I have to
to see more. I have to practice more. So he left everyone. He went to the forest and practiced meditation six years. Eventually he came in like him. You know? So these are the uh, gradually what the Buddha taught, the, uh, the suttas actually. So I think I didn't want to explain more. And if you have any questions, you can ask me, then I, I'll try to answer. I mean, about the loving kindness meditation and jhana practice. Yeah, please. I don't understand how perception and non perception is beyond nothingness. Isn't nothingness just nothingness? No. One, one is uh, the base of nothingness. The base of nothingness. The base of nothingness. And when you attain that, from that stage, when you practice continuously, continuously, then you will attain the base of neither perception nor non-perception. It's step by step, step by step. You go. Okay, and then, and then you said after that is Feeling. joy, right? You said no. After oh. that, after feeling. Perception, consciousness will stop everything. Everything will stop. And then the huge joy will rise in your mind. You will feel that. This is the highest stage actually. So you, when you feel that, that means that you will attain the stream entry. But then we leave joy back in like number three or two or something where, where you stop. Oh, that joy. one is the, that one, you know, there are five kinds of joy. I understand now what you said. Um, there are five kinds of joy. Three kinds of joy arise everyone, the normal people, you know. But when you attain the stream mantra, that one is uplifted joy. And that joy, you know, one week, two weeks, three weeks, one month, it will be with you all the time. You feel light, you feel comfortable in the whole body, the whole mind. It will, it will, be, it will last actually a long time. One week, two weeks, one month, two months later. You feel so light so comfortable in your body, you know, that time you will never break precept. So what are the precept? Not to killing any living beings. You will never kill any living beings. And you, you will never lie with anyone. You will never steal <coughs> others' properties. You never take with a say at anyone. And then you you'll never commit adultery. And you'll never drink alcohol. So you keep this five precept that time very, very strongly. Because you attain that time stream at you are going to break, but your mind will tell you, no, 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 I don't want to break it. Because your mind is pure that time. You know? So that uplifted joy you can attain only by practicing meditation. Does it make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. So you were experiencing nothingness. Um, and there was no thinking, like, you know, like uh, thoughts or images or things that, that presume weren't occurring. There was just nothingness, no, no words or anything. How did the intention to stand up and break meditation... just feel it. Huh. It just feel it. Feeling, as I said, uh, this is like the feeling meditation. Huh. You feel it that how you, your mind is where, it's just watching watching what is happening. So, you know, you, when you practice in the base of nothingness, when you, you were there, right? So your mind is so balanced. 
like that. So even your mind is a little bit fall down, then you you feel that, you know that. That time you have to use the harmonious practice, right effort. Mm. Just adjust it, just adjust it, and then you again watch it, watching, watching your mind. Then again, just use the recognize, release, relax, bring up whole some thought, and then keep the whole some thought continuously. Again, practicing, practicing. Then from there, you let in the the base of neither perception nor non-perception to go gradually like that. But when you stood up, um, did you have an awareness of your body when you stood up? Like, because you broke the meditation. Right. Um, did you break the meditation and then you stood up, or did you break the meditation by standing up? You can stand up when you break. When you break, you so then when you went the meditation again, then at that time you feel a new form, only mind. Because the base of infinite space, the base of consciousness, the base of nothingness, the base of neither perception nor non-perception, only mind. No form there. When you were first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, you have form and mind. Is it? Does it make sense? No, I'm, I'm confused about the physical action of because when you told the story, physically, like you were sitting down and you were in the base of, no, of, of nothingness, and then physically you stood up, and I'm confused as to how one would physically stand up while experiencing. It seems like you know, you'd fall over. <laughs> no, you, you, you'll not fa fall down. Uh -huh. But you'll be like, like before, but you mind that time so light. Hmm. You feel that. So light. You know? But whatever activities if you want to do, you can do it. But when you again sit down, then you feel that after few seconds, after few minutes, and again no form. Ah, oh, okay, okay. I see. You feel that. Huh. You, you, you are at the stage of uh, nothingness that time. Hmm. You feel that. So this is the feeling meditation, you know. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any more questions? If we don't have questions, I think we can should start uh, meditating, right? Now almost nine o'clock.